All right. We are back. We're back. After a very much longer than anticipated hiatus, uh, Whole Milk is back on the air. WCCR is active again. Uh, so for those of you who are, if you're returning, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who are new, I'm Jack. I'm uh, Anthony. I'm Mike. I'm Matt. And uh, just to let's first start, we're going to get a couple housekeeping items out of the way. Um, for those of you who don't know Monty is on the strike system and he was he was getting pretty close to getting kicked off last semester but well uh, we decided new year strikes reset new year new me yeah I, yep. I, I uh you know, I fa- I rediscovered myself I rediscovered my passion for sports um well not really rediscovered but uh, it's a newfound passion for sports uh, finally get to say things finally get to be prepared um so just in general 2018 is going to be the year of uh, me talking about sports and uh, and a Super Bowl. And, game. But it's a longer semester, so you gotta you gotta make sure you stay ahead because you're hey, getting pretty yourself. close. Don't worry, I still won't have anything to say because I, I still don't know listen, anything about sports. I don't have to uh, go back and forth between my grandma's house to help her take down Christmas decorations and you uh-huh. know, move furniture. Mm-hmm. There's, right. there's none of the, I pass that torch on to my brother, so there's, okay. there's okay. none of that. For me anymore. Also, we are going to start uploading our shows onto SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash whole milk chat. So please give us a listen there too. It all Check your us support out. helps. Check keep, us out. Keep an eye out. Maybe I'll put my mixtape on there. <laughs> yeah. Follow us on Twitter at whole milk chat. That too. Uh, and I guess, yeah, that's all the normal orders business. So let's get right to it. We have a ton to catch up on because a lot has happened in the last month of Philly sports. All right, let's start so, off with the yeah. big one. The big uh, the big elephant in the room. Uh, Joel Embiid made the All-Star team. Actually, no, just kidding. Uh, Got, back, Mark fly- Fultz, is, uh, he, he died in a car accident. No. Uh, I don't think that one. <laughs> okay, no. Actually, seriously. Right. It's the, the Eagles' Super Bowl, their first one in 13 years. Uh, finally, great game. Really a lot of... Uh, lot more of a blowout than I think anyone expected. Um, well, which game are you talking about, Jack? You got to be a little bit more specific. We're talking about the conference championship. What are you doing with my with my stat sheet here, Jack? I thought you were a, a real man who memorized the stats. I do. All right. Well, come on. All right. It. Well, uh, they blew out the Vikings easily. No not one even saw this coming. Uh, like the first, the Vikings had one really good drive, and it was like, oh no, this game might be a lot. Uh, this game's probably going to be pretty intense. No. It was not after that first drive. Patrick Robinson had that pick six that I guess just completely deflated the Vikings, even though it only tied the game. And uh, here we are, just 38-7. Don't, don't, seven. don't forget about, um, I forget which defender it was, but he threw his body into a Viking to allow Patrick Robinson to get a clear uh, shot. To Ronald Darby put, yeah, a, Darby put a, not really a block because he got laid out, but it was. But a, he, put his it body, was, he put his body on the line for the team, and that's what matters. He tried. And uh, yeah, Nick Foles had the game of his life. I mean, he's, I mean, it's not not quite a seven touchdown performance, but I don't think anyone was expecting him to come out and just slaughter the Vikings' yeah. pass defense, which has one of the best cornerback duos in the league. And the whole story leading up to the game was, oh, Nelson Aguilar and Zach Ertz are probably going to have the big game because they're not getting covered by a strong corners. No, Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith um, absolutely embarrassed Harrison Rhodes, uh, Xavier Rhodes, and uh, yeah. Trey Reigns. Uh, speaking of games of their lives, I guess we got to go over to the AFC. Blake Bortles played the game of his life, but his defense could not help him. Also, Doug Marone played, coach played not to lose instead of to win. Fifty-five seconds. You know, anytime left, two you timeouts. take anytime you take a knee with fifty-five seconds left in two timeouts, it shows how much confident, how how uh, scared you are, because uh, you can't. The only way you can, the only way you beat the Patriots is to keep applying pressure to the throat. You can't. You can't let you off. You got to bury him. Yeah, you got to bury him. You got to put him away easily. I mean, Doug Peterson, 29 seconds and two timeouts. He got a field goal. They didn't. The Jaguars just decided not to. And guess who's in the Super Bowl and who isn't? Yeah. Especially I- because the Jaguars played, all played extremely well for the first like three quarters of that game, and then they just collapsed. As I don't think anyone was really expecting anything different, though. I feel like every time I watch a Patriots game now and they get down, it's kind of like they'll probably come back. I mean, even I mean, even Atlanta was kind of like, it was like, mm, maybe they can't get back into it. But I still, there's a thought in the back of my head that they're totally going to come back from this. 
Yeah, you got the best QB, best coach. What else can you do? Yep. So uh, that's the conf- summary of the conference championships. So we actually have a Super Bowl rematch. You know, Patriots literally are going to repeat history again. They're going to repeat their own previous pattern of Super Bowls. Does Alshon Jeffrey have a broken leg? <laughs> no. Well, he does not. So not yet. <laughs> But what yeah, they're, they're literally, what are you, what are literally you trying to insinuate like you're <laughs> yeah. gonna go and go to the Novacare complex and break out Sean Jeffrey's leg or something. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you traitor. So, uh, so yeah, Eagles Patriots rematch from the Eagles last Super Bowl 13 years ago. Funny enough, who would have thought that the only, who would have thought that Tom Brady and Bill Belichick would still be coaching, and they would be going for their third Super Bowl win in four years against an NFC East team after beating an NFC South and an NFC West team. Going for their sixth overall Super Bowl win off their eighth appearance. Yeah, it was. Uh, it should be a good game. Um, I mean, I, we'll probably get a little bit more in depth with previewing next week, but I mean, we'll probably pick. We'll pick next week too. We won't pick this week. Um, I wonder. I, I can only imagine what the picks will be. Yeah, but. I mean, I, I don't know what to ex- – I think it should it should be a good game. I mean, if Nick Foles plays like how he did Sunday, I don't I don't see – I see it being a very close game. I see it being a very good game, but I'm not I'm going to keep my result a secret for now. Um, I'm just saying, also, the Eagles are very similar to the 1990 Giants right now, so I'm going to call it Steven Gostowski wide right. Just mm. saying. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, but – um, so I guess we gotta we can move on to the rest of the NFL. Uh, talk about some head coach changes. Oh uh, yeah, that's right too. Uh, once again, just like in 2004, both the offensive and defensive coordinators for New England are going to coach somewhere else. Finally, after like I think it was like four years of is Josh McDaniels going to coach again? So Josh McDaniels is going to coach the Colts. Yep, and get Andrew Luck uh, if he if he decides he wants to play football again. Because who knows what's going on with his shoulder. Who knows? Uh, you have uh, Patricia going to coach the Lions. I mean, I don't really know if Matt Patricia... I think the... Well, actually, they do need a better... I mean, I don't really think they have the defensive talent. He he, he also has the familiarity of Bob Quinn, who yeah, he worked true. with for 10 years at New England. But, I mean, still, the Lions have numerous problems. I mean, Jim Caldwell was not a very good coach, but he was very consistent, so... I mean, that's kind of what they needed, but they still have no running game. They have nobody on defense that's really worth mentioning. Um, they only really have Matt Stafford and, like, Golden Tate and Marvin Jones. But um, And then you have Pat Shermer going to coach the Giants. I'm so, I'm so scared for the Eagles. I mean, those seven, I can't wait for the 14 total points the Giants are going to put up against the Eagles next year. Hey, just wait. I don't Maybe understand. I don't really understand healthy. why Pat Schirmer got a second head coaching job because he already was one, and he wasn't very good to begin with. And even then, like his best off his best year as an offensive coordinator was last year with Case Keenum. It's not really. I, I don't know. I uh, don't don't really understand it because uh, Case Keenum reverted back to classic Case Keenum. Like, reverted back to the Case Keenum we all knew on Sunday. Uh, Malarkey went from saving his job to then getting offered an <laughs> extension to then fired, and Al Frabel is the head coach for the Tennessee Titans. I don't really think – I feel like the Jaguars just moved – I mean, the Titans just moved laterally there. I don't really think they – they really – I mean, Vrabel might be better because he won't hire, like, a 65-year-old guy to run the exotic smash mouth offense from the 90s. But at the same time, I, I mean, is I that really – is there really much quickly. of an improvement? Because he kind of oversaw like, one of the worst defenses in the leagues for the past two years. I, I think he was promoted too quickly. Uh, he, he was pretty much assisted with, by Romeo Cornell yeah. his past – uh, the, the past year, um, oh, Bill O'Brien went from uh, threatening to leave to getting a five-year extension. Which he, yep. I mean, maybe if he can do better than nine and seven. Well, I mean, if they have a healthy Watson, healthy JJ. Yeah, I mean, but we'll see. I don't know. Cleveland managed to keep their head coach somehow. Uh, Hugh Jackson, He's <laughs> one and thirty-one. Uh, it's quite impressive. Definitely deserving of another season. <laughs> yeah, and I mean. I mean, and he might just might hi- uh, hire. Offensive no, they hired Todd Haley. Oh, they did. Yeah. Okay. That. Um. I mean, we can we can probably recap the playoffs too because we have a lot, we have uh, a lot to catch up on. Arizona's hired Steve Wilkes, defensive coordinator. I think that was just because they waited too long to get anybody else. And, I don't even. Uh, I didn't even know Steve Wilkes was even a potential coaching candidate. The Panthers' defense is also 
Like, it's not... I mean, it had, they have... It's very inconsistent. And the Cardinals need an offensive guy, really. That's their problem. And uh, not, not a head coaching change, but one that'll affect uh, the team a lot. Tom Cable is now the offensive line coach for the Raiders. You mean... No, I thought he went back. To, oh, wait. Oh, yeah, wait. And John Gruden is finally coaching again to yeah. the Raiders after Mark Davis made, like, a King's Ransom offer. Who knows? $10 million for 10 years? I mean, no, it was $100 million for 10 years. So he's getting $10, 10, million a, $10 million a year. He maybe has an ownership stake that we don't know about yet. Um, but it's that, pretty crazy. But uh, that offensive line, you can already tell they're going to be last in the league because Tom Cable yeah, Tom is Cable's the offensive worst offensive yeah, line wait, coach wait, in the league. Can't wait for Cleo Mack to convert to left tackle. Um, yeah, that's the— I mean, poor Jack Del Rio. It must have been funny reading the reports. Oh, hey, look, they're thinking John Gruden's going to get another head coaching job. Oh, where? The Raiders. Oh. And then, uh, so I guess we can move on to— cause that's most of the head coaching changes, don't you well, think? Well, Marvin Lewis magically got an yeah, extension. I guess I guess he did for eliminating the Ravens from the playoffs yeah, on a go. miracle play, on got a fourth and twelve play. Get, getting the Bills in to the the playoffs was enough to keep your job. Yeah, I, all those all those donations, <laughs> yeah. all that charity, all, all those wings. Yeah, that's what he did it for. Mike Brown's getting all that charity money. Um, so, I was I was thinking if we could go back and talk about um, the potential Super Bowl matchup. Uh, a little bit more, because like, I feel I felt a lot more inclined to talk about that this week than um, basketball, because I haven't been really catching up on basketball. But well, I think we'll talk about it more next week since it's the yeah. It's so like the week. What's like that annoying bye week? We can do a Pro Bowl preview. Yeah, we can do a Pro Bowl. Preview. No Eagles, no Patriots are in it. So, yep. so uh, the skills hey. competitions tomorrow night. Uh, play dodgeball. Watch it if you. That was pretty if good anyone last still year. has ESPN. Um. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, we'll get more in depth with the Super Bowl. We'll do like a we can we can do like a big playoff recap now. We did Super Bowl playoff recap. Yeah, we'll do a playoff All recap. Right. So, the playoffs have actually been pretty good this year. Last year they were awful. There was like one good game. Yeah, that, this, the, this year was the a Cowboys lot Packers game was like the only good game last year. You could argue, make an argument that every game has been close and competitive this year. Um, well, well, with the exception of the Eagles Vikings. game. Yeah, that was really like the only blowout. And um, and Patriots Titans, but no one really is like. Yeah, but no, that, that no, one expected, no one expected yeah. that to even be a game. Uh, Jaguars <laughs> played a really good game against the Steelers, who were too focused on playing against the Patriots. Yeah, the the, 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 the uh, Mike Tomlin know that for some reason, after all these years, he still can somehow never game plan. I don't understand. I mean, I saw that game was like it was like wasn't it like twenty eight to seven at one point. Yeah, it, it, well, I'm pretty sure the Jags had to lead the entire game. Yeah, I don't think the Jaguars ever trailed. And, like, I mean, it was Big Ben and Antonio Brown can only get that team so far. That defense really, like, they couldn't, they didn't stop the Jaguars on third down. Um, they ha- had no sacks. They had, like, no turnovers or anything. It was pretty bad. It was a really bad defensive showing. Their defense is not like that of their Super Bowl runs. It is, yeah. It is no longer... That since Tom and I mean, taken I mean, over. they they had a great offensive game. I mean, it's yeah, not. Yeah, they scored it wasn't, like It's 45. just like Mike Tomlin. I don't like. They all were way. Mike Tomlin did not keep them focused on playing the Jaguars, so they went out and got embarrassed. And I mean, you know, they fired Todd Haley, but I don't really know if Todd. I mean, like Todd Haley and Ben Roethlisberger didn't get along, but he. I mean, they still put up forty-two points against that defense. It wasn't Todd Haley's fault they lost that game. Mm-hmm. I think it was more. Big I mean, ben just Mike Tomlin definitely is going to have a very short leash probably in the near future if they keep letting disappointed in the playoffs. Because I mean, he does have a Super Bowl and he has made he has made it to the Super Bowl twice, but they don't. But they the haven't Steelers really don't like they, making head coach. They just changes. never have. They just haven't like. I mean, it's like because all the other years it's they let Tebow beat them on on the first play of overtime, which should have never happened. Uh, they let. What else happened? Uh, they let the they lost to the Jaguars in his first year as a head coach because they were they were blown, tired out by the end of the season. Um, then last year they had, well, the year before that, then they lost to the Ravens in like a really in a blowout in an uncompetitive game. Then they lost to the Broncos because their whole team died. Mm-hmm. Then they lost last year to the Patriots in a game because for some reason also Pittsburgh can never seem to game plan for the Patriots and they it's always hey. 
Let's put one guy. Let's put a linebacker on Gronk, and we'll probably that'll probably win us the game. How about we not cover Gronk? Yeah. And maybe they won't notice. Yeah. I mean, it's like Steelers are. I mean, they're still a good team. It's just I don't understand how you have three of the best like players at their respect. Three of the best players. They have the best wide receiver and the best running back in the game, and you have like a top ten quarterback, and you fail to do anything really. Defense wins games. Defense wins championships. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Oh, we also have the Titans' miracle comeback against the Chiefs, because <laughs> you know Mike Malarkey was going to get fired like three times, and he still did. Yes, but it was kind of funny seeing that happen. We, we all thought for a second he was safe. Yeah. Uh, Jaguars also beat the Bills after the Bills made the playoffs for the first time since 1999, and then promptly put up a field goal and said goodbye. Uh, then we had the Minneapolis miracle. Oh yeah, that. The Vikings, definitely. That was definitely part of the reason why the Vikings lost that game. Because how you come down from winning that on like a... I mean, the Vikings won that game on a fluke play. They were extremely lucky that they had a rookie safety who blew an easy tackle and went... He was trying not to get penalized and going for the legs. He completely whiffed, and then Stephon Diggs took it into the end zone. I mean... Poor Grandma Millie. Yeah. Yeah, I think also that the... Game on Sunday, I think that really put her out of her misery. I haven't, I haven't seen any obituary for Grandma Millie yet. Um, it's coming. Yeah, it's but yeah, I expect, I expect the news will hit everybody um, within the coming week. Grandma Millie might go into cardiac arrest because the Eagles, um, you know, absolutely demolished the Vikings. Yeah, poor Vikings fans who have to get schooled and blown out by the Eagles, and then they get to come to their city and watch them play in the Super Bowl. I, I think. Um, during the game, Fox like zoomed the camera in on like some guy who was like 99 years old. Uh, so instead of uh, Grandma, yeah, the I'd Eagles like, have a 99 year. I like old I like to think of him as Grandpa Philly. Okay. So I think it, I, I mean, like if, we, if we can get that started, um, Grandpa Philly going to the Super Bowl. Um, that'd be I, I feel like that would be really nice so, for him. So let's talk about some stuff about uh, the aftermath of Philly winning. I mean, Super Bowl ticket <laughs> prices dropped. <laughs> Yeah, which is, I mean, I'm kind of surprised because you think Eagles fans would definitely be, like, the first. You, I imagine that stadium's going to be, if any, it's going to be a majority of Eagles fans. Oh, yes. Uh, but also. Make sure you, um, to, to the city of Philadelphia, um, do what the, uh, the Minnesota fans accuse us of doing. Make sure you pack your C batteries uh, yeah. to throw Tom Brady while he has his, um, his little blanket over his shoulders. Exactly. Uh, just to, you know, shake the game up a little bit. Bounce right off of them. And um, uh, another thing, uh, Philly pre grease in the poles so you yeah. can't climb them. Yeah, Crisco, only, yeah. Crisco only, cops, grease police. Only motivated them. Someone drove a dune buggy up the art museum steps. And after all of this, no one was arrested for celebration. <laughs> I, I don't understand how. Because the police were just like, let them celebrate. They I were the ones here's driving the, the dune here's buggy. Here's the thing. I mean,. I, there was gonna be crazy celebrations if they won or if they even if they lost, but I don't know how you top, how you top them winning this. If they win the Super Bowl, what's gonna happen then? Bedlam. Yeah, I can't the, even imagine. I think I don't think Philly is gonna exist if the Eagles win the Super Bowl, and if they lose, I it probably it definitely will not exist. I, yeah, either way, it's not. We'll, it's, we'll have some uh, good videos like from the 08 World Series. Yeah. With people falling off of light posts after being hit by beer bottles. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll probably have some probably have some people riding on top of cars and big black guys in eagles masks and dog masks everywhere. Yep, that'll be that'll be a celebration for the ages. That parade um, is. I'm really having a serious moral dilemma that if the Eagles do win, I don't. I really hope that parade is on a day I don't have class because. I really want to go and just experience it because I imagine it would be oh, just skip class. It would be the day. It would be the day of a lifetime. I can't even imagine. Unless you, assuming you don't get trampled. Yeah, assuming you don't get. I don't get trampled. Um. So I think that that's uh some good NFL talk. What else do you have? Next I also, up on the uh, docket. Real quick, I just want to say, um, I feel that Super Bowl Fifty Two. It's just going to be um, – the refs are going to change it up a little bit. They're going to get, um, you know, a lot more viewers this year because it's an underdog story. I think the refs are going to change up um, the rules to t- kind of, you know, 
uh, shake things up a little bit. Yeah, the Patriots I think it's going to be a game of um, backyard football, two hand touch, uh, flea flickers only. <laughs> the return how, of the flea how, how many? How many flea flickers? I think there, there were three. like I think the Jaguars three ran total. one, the Patriots ran like two or three, and the Eagles ran one. Yeah. So yeah, game of backyard football, Super Bowl Fifty Two. Taking it old school. Yep. All right, so. We also have some basketball to talk about with the Sixers. Uh, we're in the midst of January Sixers, which is, you know, the only month of the year the Sixers play very good basketball. But uh, It's a little bit different now. Yeah, it's a little it's bit a different October. now because they actually uh, are in contention for a playoff spot. Um, so we did – there was a deal that if the Eagles – the Sixers won their eight straight games starting Monday against the Grizzlies, they would go to the Super Bowl. But on Monday – the Sixers blew another lead in the fourth quarter and lost to the Grizzlies. And um, I watched that game. That fourth quarter is really hard to watch. There was uh, 10 turnovers in just the fourth alone, 23 total. And it wasn't like just Jared Bayless. It wasn't 23 Jared Bayless uh, turnovers. but Everybody it, had a bad game. The whole team was doing it. They, they were just chucking it out of bounds, throwing it to the other team, taking passes too late. Um it was just a sad game to watch. It was painful. Um, I've seen the Sixers do this a couple other times this season. Yeah, it's just like – I think it's like they're – it's like they blew a big lead to the Warriors. They blew a big lead to the Raptors. They blew a big lead – To the Rockets. To the Rockets. To they, the Celtics. To the Celtics. I mean, they've been playing. They're like, what, 8-2, and 7-2? And, two, and they're they playing – They are 8-3 and three counting the Grizzlies game. And they're playing, they're playing the Bulls tonight, so that should be a better game. I mean, they should win that game, so maybe they'll get back on track. Poor it's just, TJ, though. He's missing the game. Yeah. It's just kind of frustrating because I don't really know. I think it's just because they're a young team. I think they just need to get a little bit older. They need some more veteran presence. Uh, more lay presence. Yeah, they need a better – they definitely need a – they need a bench badly. They need a backup point guard, like seriously, because uh, I don't know where in, what in the world is going on with Markel Fultz is uh, – is kind of a little. Yeah, so let's let's talk about Markel Fultz. Cause uh, he's he's shooting again, but it, he's still. Um, he's shooting again, but there's still relative hitches. Uh, he can't shoot threes, for, which was what he was good at in right college. Right now, um, that's because it's not the real Markel Fultz. Mm, all right, so let's talk about some conspiracies. Yeah, so there's been a bunch of conspiracy theories floating around about Markel Fultz. One is he hurt his shoulder BMXing over the summer. Uh, and he hit it, and then also, and then uh, hit it for contractual obliga- uh, reasons, and then continued to practice, and that's what caused it to get so bad. There's another one where he t- he was actually because he never he didn't make the tournament. He only played like 15 games in college. He just had a magical shooting streak, and he just shot really well for like 15 games. And it and he's actually he's actually a really bad shooter. And he tried to change his shot over the summer and fix that, but he hurt his shoulder. And that's how he hurt his shoulder, which I kind of believe, honestly, but that's the most realistic. I think the BMX one's the most realistic. I don't know. I mean, he is, he is, when yeah. he was it's in hard high to re- school, it's he, hard he to, had the hype around him to go to the NBA. It's also, like, it's also weird to think. He's also only 19. <laughs> um, I mean, he was still – he was a consensus number one overall pick. I don't know. Like, all these ESPN people and, like, basketball people are like, oh, you should have never been picked number one. The Boston Celtics are geniuses for trading down. But – the Sixers really didn't give up a lot to get him, so it's not like, I mean, maybe if that Sacramento pick turns out to be worth something or the Lakers pick turns out to be worth something, it, we could look back later down the line and be like, uh, but hindsight's twenty twenty. And also, I think he played well over summer in the summer league too. It wasn't like yeah. he was awful from the moment out the gate. Um, but I think also with the the picks were given up. If it's two through five, we give up the Lakers, and then we get the Kings pick, which I think is going to be a really high pick. Yeah, because the Kings are bad this year, and they're not, not going to get any better anytime soon. And they're probably going to trade away George Hill, who's like the last talented piece on that team. Yeah. So they'll be even worse next year. And the, I mean, but the Lakers are bad too. So and if I mean, the Lakers if end that up turns with, into a one, then we a, get it anyway. It's a no, it's a real deep NBA draft. So I think either way, I think we're set up in a way. Yeah, we're, it's set up in a way where it's like even if we miss on Fultz, we really can't lose we're, we're, the trade. We're, we're safe because yeah. we still get pr- most likely a top three pick within the next two years. Yeah. So it's not – it's not. I mean, it's still concerning because, I mean, Fultz 
I mean, he's probably just going through like the annual Sixers rookie needs to miss his rookie year it's before he can play basketball. That's that's why we should draw, uh, draft Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just fits it's too automatically. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or maybe they'll just sign LeBron James over the summer because the Cavs are falling apart. Yeah. So so uh, let's talk about the Cavs now. Of course, this is their annual slump period, but this one seems it's like worse every year in January before. is like they all hate each other and then they don't want to play basketball and they lose a bunch of games. But they've been kind of on and off all year, so it's not like typically Cavs. And the thing is, too, Isaiah Thomas is back. He's playing well. But uh, they all hate each other. <laughs> and, and their defense is, like, historically bad. They give up 148 against the Thunder, which are a good team. They do have scores, but you don't give 148 points up in a game. Yes. Um, especially with a star player like LeBron on your team. And then they also all hate Kevin Love because apparently he faked being sick. Th- that's what the they game. believe. Um, yeah, that's what they believe. I mean, but the thing is, Kevin Love's, like, actually important to that team. He's, like, the second best player right now. Yeah, he's an all-star on that team. Um, just to think, if the Cavs didn't trade for Kevin Love, how much better could they be? Because they'd still have Andrew Wiggins. But then they'd have no center at all. That's true. They, they'd have no, they'd have no big men. They'd have Anderson Varejo. I think that was who the guy they signed. Um, yeah. So the Cavs right now, of course, their annual we need to trade yeah. for someone. So some of the names: uh, DeAndre Jordan, Lou Williams, Kent Bazemore. Um, and the most realistic one, George Hill, which seems to be working out to actually happen yeah. with Shumpert, Fry, and possibly Rose being involved. And the um, Kings are looking for a third team to take some of their players since they're at the max roster size, with the rumor team being the Mavericks. Who I mean, will most likely look to try to offload I mean, well, Orleans. It's not like, yeah, the Cavs are bad, but I mean, the playoffs will roll around. They're going to sweep the whole field, and then they're going to lose to the Warriors in six. I, I don't think they'll be able to sweep the Celtics. Definitely. But the Celtics are kind of in a sl- are slumping now, too. The entire East is really th- – every single team has its flaws. It's the West that's stacked. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's a strong chance that uh, LeBron could end up on the the Rockets. I think that's his best his best chance. I can't even that, – that, that's so – that situation would be so you, – You trade Ryan Anderson and P.J. Tucker – or Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon. You, you'd have, like, but then you'd have all three of their best players all need to have the ball in their hands to be good. No, no, no. Uh, you, you can have them play off ball. Yeah, you can have them play off ball. It's just, like, I think LeBron's the kind of guy, he needs to be the center of the show in order to... Well, what you do is you stagger your minutes so there's always one at least on the court at all times. True. I mean, but then there's also LeBron congratulating his younger self on scoring 30,000 points before he even got to 30,000 points. And then he loses the game of course. against the Spurs where they don't have Kawhi. And Kawhi Tony apparently Parker. is mad at the Spurs, too. So yeah. the and entire NBA hates each other. Every single team is mad. Everyone's on the trade block because Kevin Love's now going to be traded to some team. Yeah, but he's going to be. That's like um, every year. Yeah. I I don't know. I can't wait to see who gets traded. Um, You know. Do, do the Pelicans try to get another player to actually get that team? To yeah, do they actually just... get a guard to pass to their bigs or no? Or, yeah, or some defensive wing. Who knows? Uh, I mean, cause the Pelicans are in playoff contention, aren't they? Yeah. Are they, like, they're the, currently, like, the eighth seed or something, The right? sixth seed. The sixth seed. Yes. I mean, the Thunder are, like, fourth or fifth. Uh, but the Thunder have been hot, so. The Thunder are finally better. all clicking. Yeah. So if they can keep the team together and then get some like cheap role players in the bench, the Timberwolves are doing good this year. But they'll probably, you know, Tom Thibodeau isn't can't for some reason never wants to give his players any rest. So they'll probably collapse in the playoffs because they're just so fatigued. Um, as usual, the Warriors are still the Warriors. Just the Warriors. I don't think anyone could. Let's see. I think we're heading. I really, I really hope we don't get a fourth Cavs with Warriors final for the. Fourth year in a row, but it probably will be. It probably will happen, and the Warriors will probably win again because they'll, the, they'll sweep no this team time. in the, no team in the East is good enough to beat them. The, they will fully sweep this time. Um, the the Miami Heat are sneakily like the fourth seed, and they didn't get any All Stars, which just magical that one that they're the fourth seed. The Heat, yeah, are the fourth seed. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. They, they <laughs> that shows have, how bad the East is. They are it's having like, a sneakily great season right now. Goran Dragic, Sean Whiteside. Uh, they got the guy from D- Duke. Uh, they have uh, Kelly Omlick. 
uh, what's the Dion Waiters? What's the guy from Duke? He was like, it's like Justice Winslow. Yep. Josh Richardson. Tyler Richardson, the other Richardson that they yeah. gave a ton of money to stay. It's a oh, weird wait, team. that might have been the Nets. I don't remember. It's, no, he's on the he's on the Heat. It's That's right. it's a weird team they have, but they're like fourth place. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're just gonna either lose to the Cavs or Celtics because they're the only two teams that are worth uh, that in, are worth anything. An in interesting East. thing in the off season is to see uh, Kevin Durant will most likely decline his player option because he'll have semi bird rights. But does he take the max? Probably not. But at the same time, I think in 2019, regardless, one of them has to leave. They're all gonna form the super team in L.A. Um, Durant, Durant, LeBron. Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, Paul George are all gonna go. Are all gonna go to L. Are all gonna go to L. A. and form the super team. And Levar Ball is gonna be their coach because health's gonna freeze, freeze over. Yep. And then they still lose to the Warriors. Yep. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for. The, I'm waiting for the moment that the Lakers fire Luke Walton, and then they're gonna hire Levar Ball because I, I really. It's so stupid that I think it can actually happen. I, I think if you hire... Because he already, he's already coaching in Lithuania. How long till he forces that guy out? I, I, I think if you hire LeVar Ball, you are going to get a <laughs> sub-10 win season out of that team. I don't... It... <laughs> I think it will have a losing streak worse than the, than the Sixers did. I don't think you could physically keep that team. I together. mean, put if they, if they, yeah, because probably Lavar Ball's strategy. It's pass the ball to Lonzo. Yeah, pass the ball to Lonzo. Pass it to my boy. Pass it to Lonzo. He's got a great three point shot. He's not gonna get blocked. Hey, give me the rock. <laughs> pass it to Lonzo, and then he's gonna sign Lamelo. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's gonna sign all three of his kids. And, and then, then he's, yeah, he's, gonna, he's gonna, gonna tell, he's gonna tell, minutes. he's gonna tell LeBron James just pass to my kids all game. Yeah, <laughs> the the Los Angeles Ballers. Gonna yeah, he's gonna name. he's gonna change the name. He's gonna buy out the team because Big Baller Brand is gonna become a billion dollar industry. <laughs> I can totally see it happening. This, this I can see it happening because people just keep giving him attention. And if like if the people stop giving him attention, he would just go away. But ESPN can't get enough of him because ESPN gets money. It's the only thing keeping them alive is Lavar Ball. <laughs> yeah, Lavar Ball's gonna, gonna take ESPN. over ESPN. He's gonna get his own ESPN he's, show. Yeah. Everything's just going to be branded He's Big gonna Baller Brand. He's going to be on first brand. take with, it's be with the, Stephen the, A. Smith. The Big Baller Brand Network. They're going to announce shoe drops. They're going to, you know, cover Lonzo's uh, backstory. They're going to, you know, tell, uh, make a bunch of uh, autobiographies about Lonzo and he, He's going to invite Michael Jordan to face him one if he wants. Yep. That's, that's going to be prime time. They're just going to loop that game. He's, they're going to play one game and... First if, to score, Lavar starts with the ball. Yeah, if Lavar if Lavar uh, wins, they're gonna just play it on loop at prime time every night. And if he loses, they're gonna play the game until he wins, and then they're gonna loop it on prime time. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I bet that in in, in at least in the next two or three months, Lavar Ball is gonna become head coach of that Lithuania team. They're gonna have a miraculously good season because they have the only two players that are actually like. NCAA or even NBA talent, and then Pass to my kids. somehow he's going to get hired by the Lakers, and then they're going to sign LeBron, Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, and everybody else. But his whole strategy is just going to be passed to my kids. Yep. And Kyle Kuzma's going to get cut because the ball hate him. Uh, yeah, and then Luke Walton becomes the head coach of the Cavaliers. <laughs> that would be that would be an off season for the ages. I, I don't know. But I can, would can not. I honestly, it's like as much as as stupid as as crazy and far fetched as it sounds, it could totally. It would. It can totally happen. I think that's the only way you could top uh, this off season that just happened. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, we also have all star teams. Yep. Uh, Joel Embiid made it. Finally. As a uh, starter. Yeah, as a starter, it's good. With uh, sixty overall or sixty four overall games or so. He turned down Rihanna. Yep. Uh, on live television, missed, Rihanna missed out. Uh, what else? Uh, Rihanna. Uh, they had uh, the rest of the starters. Ben Simmons did not get uh, reserves. No. I mean, he's kind of he's kind of been slumping for the past couple weeks. Oh yeah, definitely for the last like month and a half, he hasn't been playing that well. Yes. He has been scoring as well. Mm-hmm. Once Ben Simmons gets a jumper, he'll be he'll be one of the best players in the league. But as Brett Brown then. said, he won't work on that till the off season. So. Yep. But. 
he they should be he should he'll be better. He's definitely got he's got a lot of room for improvement. He's got a lot of potential. Um, but if I the mean, Sixers team returns with Ben Simmons with a jumper and a work in Markel Fultz, ooh. Yeah, but LeBron starting in the East as usual. Uh, well, Kyrie, what you call it? it's the um the whole captains thing because it's not I don't it's not East versus West. Yeah, yeah. Uh, LeBron, the, LeBron's one of the captains. Yeah, so it's yeah, uh, it's LeBron, Steph's. LeBron, uh, the top two get captains of the team, right? So yes. it's LeBron and Steph Curry, like, yeah, like everybody uh, would expect. But dra- then, drama alert: Clay Thompson said he'll demand a trade if Steph Curry does not pick him. <laughs> <laughs> That's Curry's first pick. He's gonna be the last guy picked. That's a joke. <laughs> um. But yeah, Kyrie, Kyrie Marta Rosen, yeah, uh, Giannis, who tried to not get Jason Kidd fired, even though Jason Kidd sucks, because you know the Bucks are also have a lot of young talent for a defensive-minded coach being uh, like twenty eighth in yeah. efficiency. But yeah, the Bucks should be a lot better too. But Giannis is about the only thing worth talking about on the Bucks. Shout out Herb. Hey, if Jabari Parker comes back, <laughs> if ever if he ever plays. He's only played like he's played less games than Embiid at this point, basically. Uh, so yeah, so Embiid, uh, Kyle Lowry, as usual, the only two Raptors that make that team still relevant until they get swept in the playoffs. Uh, Bradley Beal, who made it instead of John Wall, which is a little bit surprising because John Wall is still good. Uh, Victor Oladipo, I, I guess I guess that trade did work out for Indiana somehow. It, it worked out for both sides. Yeah. Kevin Love, who, you know, the Cavaliers hate. Chris Stapps, who is the only good player on the Knicks, as you, as he will be for the next no, 20 the, years. No, dude, they got Ron Baker. What are you talking about? White guy hero. White guy hero. Tried to block Anthony Davis, almost died. Yep. And Al Horford, who I forget still plays basketball. And then in the West, you got yeah, – this is going to sound – this is, like, really embarrassing because in the it's, West you got James Harden, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, Damian Lillard. Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, Russell Westbrook, Lamarcus Aldridge, Gerald Green. Oh wait, Draymond Green and Carl yeah, Anthony yeah. Towns. And there's a ton of players in the West who got snubbed. Yeah, like Paul George didn't make All Star. Like Carmelo Anthony. Oh man, if you like just, and if anything, there might just be more players that go to the West next season. Like, yeah, <laughs> instead of fleeing the West, they're flocking towards it for some reason. I I don't understand the mindset, but. I guess you don't want easy playoff teams. Yeah. Whatever. And apparently in the East you do. Yeah. You got LeBron, Kyrie. Yeah. yeah but like that's, Gordon Hayward. That's about it. <laughs> it's like you don't have you don't have much star power. Joel Embiid's gonna be star. He already is. Oh yeah. He yeah. got a player of the week. He scored thirty point, average thirty points. Yeah, he's been playing better. He's maybe he'll make it past January. Hopefully, we're getting real close to saying he did. Uh, and he's well, he still isn't playing back to backs yet. Yeah, they're, they're, this week, this coming week is like real rough, so he probably won't play a lot. But yeah, he's definitely like the problem with him is he ha- has not had his like his his endurance and stamina is like conditioning is real, not as good because he hasn't played a lot of games so once he probably plays like close to a full season he'll be a lot better because he needs to learn to keep his condi- extend his conditioning for the entire year well the thing is he was injured so um that's why he got some little fat at the start of the season he dropped yeah. like uh what was it like 15 to 25 pounds i missed the dreadlocks that he had so uh if he, if he keeps the uh the, the weight off then at the start of the season oof. yeah we'll see yeah, he's got to get improve on his conditioning. That whole team just needs to improve on their conditioning and their turnovers, and turnovers. they need some they need some old heads. We we need to get rid of uh, Jared Bayless though. Well, isn't his contract up? Or nope. no, he got a four year deal, right? Yes, yeah, he has one more year. Can they buy him out or no? Uh, I don't even know if the, if the team's looking at doing that, but they're gonna try to trade him because this team is looking to compete in twenty eighteen. Yeah, you got to sign some max uh, player. LeBron James. LeBron James. It's probably going to happen, too. There's a good chance. Paul George. Or Paul, eh. I don't really. I'd uh, rather dude, have LeBron James. Dude, the defen- just think of the defensive prowess of Paul George, Joel Embiid, Robert Covington, and Ben Simmons. No one would score on that starting lineup. It doesn't even matter who your shooting guard is. He has uh, a good chance. Yeah. 
Hopefully we bring back J.J. Redick. Yeah, we probably should because they don't have anyone. I mean, Markel Fultz apparently can't shoot threes anymore, so who's going to shoot threes besides was, him and Covington? What was the other stat, Mike, that you were saying when T.J. McConnell has like more oh, than 30 uh, minutes? The, the Sixers are 7-2 and two when T.J. gets over 30 minutes in a game this season. Let's give T.J. all the minutes. Uh, sixth man of the year? Is that what I'm hearing? We should. No, Lou Williams has, is, is like all-star numbers right now as a sixth man. Oh, yeah, Chris Paul didn't even make the all-star game too. Yeah. There's so much talent. And Blake, well, Blake Griffin got hurt. Yep. And DeAndre Jordan. It's just too many players, too much talent in the West compared to the East. Uh, What else? Uh, we got the Pro Bowl for the NFL. No one really cares about it. It doesn't, it's starting a lot earlier for once, though. It's not starting at like 8 o'clock, so no one will watch it at all. Um, I don't, Who's ESPN even going to have called that game since John Gruden's gone? Uh, Maybe a man off the street. No more spider two wide banana, no oh, more no fair. more turkey hole, no. no more passive aggressiveness with Sean McDonough. No more smoothies, <laughs> no more smoothies. Uh, yeah, but I mean, but with the loss of one, uh, we 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 gain another in Tony Romo. Yeah, who? When's Tony Romo gonna become a QB coach? I I don't know. I like him as commentary. I don't think he'd change either. I, Although, I, I like, the, really his, <laughs> he was kind of annoying during the Patriots game with his obviously, like, ooh. ooh, ooh uh, if, if, they, if they just cut his On mic, an obvious catch. If they just cut his mic at that point, I think I think you got the best commentary right there. If you just cut his mic when he's making those sound effects. Yeah, and watching the Vikings game, Troy Aikman was definitely, tr- is definitely trying to become Tony Romo, too, because he, he's realizing that he doesn't do that. He's trying to do the same thing where he talks about – what plays are what plays and what the quarterback's going to throw to? Yeah, he's trying. He's trying, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, he's still he's still misnaming players. Not everybody can be an elite commentator. Not Phil like Simms. Reese. Just says the sack is given up by a player that's injured on the sideline. <laughs> him and Joe. Well, him and Joe Buck both hate the Eagles. So I don't know why you let a Cowboys player call an Eagles game, but yeah. I mean, and Joe Buck is obvious. If you if no one's realized by now, he obviously does not like the Eagles. For whatever reason, I think it's because he's probably a Cowboys fan or something else. But he also really loves Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone said if if Aaron if Joe Buck called an Aaron Rodgers if Joe Buck and Aaron Rodgers ever called a game together, all you would hear was slobbering noises. You can interpret <laughs> whatever that would however you want to. Um, but yeah, there was that. Uh, the Pro Bowl skills competition tomorrow night. Uh, I don't even think it was really that good last year, and everyone was really hyped for it. Was uh, it? I don't remember. I, I the dodgeball was cool. That was like the only event I like. I mean, I'm not. I don't care because no Eagles are playing in it. So why do I bother watching it? I mean, the Patriots have never played in it in mm. like the past three years. So who cares? Pro Bowl, just a waste of a game. Really shouldn't exist. Just a sad existence. They should just make they should just make the teams and just not play the game because who cares? You, you got to make it like All Star Weekend. Got to yeah. make it better. You got to let it. I don't really know if there's any way to improve. You football. can't have. They've the, tried everything. They you, tried drafting teams. They would it back. Backyard football, two two and touch. Flag football. Yeah, play play a little game of flag football. Just bring out a bunch of old retired players and have them play a flag football game against the retired against the uh, against against the Pro Bowl team and see what happens. Uh, I could go with T.O. Chad Johnson and Randy Moss as wide receivers going against cornerbacks. Oh, dude, I'd love to see that. That'd be good. That'd be a good one. That'd be that's an idea. You have Michael Vick playing quarterback. That's a thought. I'd watch that. NFL pay me money. Give me uh, more than two dollars for yeah. that idea. Yeah, NFL, I'm copywriting that idea, so if you're listening, don't steal it from me unless you want it, and you, that'll be cost like uh, $3 billion. But what else? Pro Bowl, did our playoff recap. Uh, I, maybe is it finally time to start actually talking about the Phillies because we have a recap show that we've actually had a lot to recap, but we've uh, kind of yeah, we've kind of addressed it. So, yeah. We could do a little bit of Phillies, which is, I think it was the first time we've even really acknowledged them. As a team. Well, yeah, yeah, because by the time school started, the season was over for the Phillies. Yeah, and they suck anyway. Actually, no, we didn't didn't even start doing the radio show yet, right? We didn't start until, like, mid-October. Yeah. I don't think we actually did a show until November, though. 
Um, yeah, so Philly, spring training is just around the corner. Pitchers and catchers, I think, report after, like almost immediately after the Super Bowl. Yep, new coach, Gabe Kapler. He's uh he's got a quite a he's got quite interesting opinions on some things, but he's a young guy. Apparently, he'll relate to the young players in the clubhouse very well. He's a good, he's a good clubhouse guy. Good clubhouse guy. Shout out to Mr. Cohen. Good clubhouse guy. Uh, he's I don't a. Know. I don't. I don't. I don't think anyone. I mean. The Phillies are finally gonna have start those players that they've drafted five years ago start playing this year. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens. The team still really, has the I same don't think problems. I'm expecting just, any much. I'm anything. not expecting that. I'm not expecting anything. I think it, I don't care with the way the Sixers and the Eagles have been playing this year. It's it's kind of like I've kind of completely forgotten about the Phillies, and the Phillies will probably be they'll be relevant again soon because they have a lot of talent waiting to come up. But it's just. It's like, I mean, it's fun to go to because the games are cheap, and if they hit a lot of home runs and you're in a good section, that's fun to watch. But other than that, there's just not really, there's not really anything about them worth mentioning besides Reese Hoskins, Aaron Nola, Nick Williams, who they apparently want to trade. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of people on that team. I mean, they signed Carlos Santana, who to play first base, but it's yeah. just, there's nothing about something like there's nothing like woo. Nothing about that team that's like exciting at this point. I mean, maybe if they probably because it's towards the end of the semester, we probably won't have a lot, a whole lot to talk about, so we can start talking Phillies a little bit more. We but. talk about. Um, I could touch on the World Cup. Oh shoot, that is this year. Yeah, yeah, and the Winter Olympics. Winter Olympics, World Cup. But no, I feel like the Winter Olympics, no one really cares about, it. especially because the hockey teams, they're not even using NHL players anymore. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Is it that just- was like a thing a while ago? It was like a year or two ago. They decided I don't th- on that. I don't think why a lot they, of people are going to watch the World Cup. Why did they just... decide on that, though? That, that's like when after... Um... Uh, it's something about... It's like the NHL doesn't like having their season interrupted for it, and they also don't think they should be compensated for it more. It's part. It's like it's like at both the NHL and the IOC's fault. It's just neither sides... either Both sides are too stubborn to come to an agreement on anything. Because that was like after the... Um, what was it? 2012 basketball team blew out Nigeria by like... 120 points they're like oh we should only do college players even then the u.s would still be really good because the u.s would still win yeah but just, like why why deny people the right to to play for their country it's just who cares i mean i don't know I mean, maybe I'm, maybe if some notable things happen in the winter olympics we could touch on it but i i, I like the summer olympics a lot better because i can like watch it a little bit more because it's like not the events aren't going on in the middle of my day yeah when i'm going to class and stuff but i guess you can talk about the world cup a little bit uh Monty. yeah, yeah. as uh, i mean i could i could touch on as much as i can but the u.s didn't qualify this year so i won't you know i i can't really talk about yeah no i, I don't like no one's really i don't US think anyone's and, really that excited for it anyway because well yeah because the u.s didn't qualify got yeah. beat up by uh, Trinidad and Tobago. That's who they lost to. That's why they what? can't. Yeah, they Trinidad beat them, so they couldn't qualify because they're stuck in the past. But that's a that's another conversation. No huge soccer talent. No, they do not have any huge soccer talent. Um, yeah, but then so more. I feel like I'm trying to think if we missed anything from the NFL because uh, I feel we like we cover the NBA pretty well. We, we could s- talk about... I mean, the uh, Sixers won the Christmas game. Yeah. So that was a good one. Uh, that was a good game. Early game. The first time they played on Christmas in a while, so they won, and they won. So that's good. Um, we could talk about potential uh, moves t- uh, or potential uh, rankings for next season for NFL. I'd rather do that after the Super Bowl. That'll be our way too early power rankings. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, yeah, and then I think we'll do our preview a little bit more. I guess we, we, we didn't really touch on a lot of stats from either game. I mean, yeah, the Eagles had... Yeah, I, I, I wrote down a bunch, yeah. of, bunch of stats for Watch each game. talk for a bit. I'm kind of tired. Uh, all right, so put the mic this way. Um, so Philadelphia, Atlanta, um, was it 10-14 with the final score or something like that? 15-10. 15-10. Um, Goal line stand. They only scored one touchdown. Yeah, uh, I feel what really um, contributed to that game was that 
Atlanta really focused on two receivers. I forget which receivers exactly. Um, Julio Jones and Muhammad Sanu. Yeah. Julio Jones had something like 100 yards. Yeah, whatever yards. happened to Taylor Gabriel? I thought he was supposed to be good. Um, or is he just like a gadget player at this point, I guess? I think he just had a breakout season last year. And also, he's not through uh, the... Kyle Shanahan isn't their offensive coordinator anymore. Yeah, either. so they, they, they had a huge step down in offensive coordinator. Uh, who now has uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. And they finished the season undefeated with Garoppolo. Yeah, so the 49ers will probably be a scary team next year. Spooky. If they improve in the offseason. Or maybe that was just luck. You never know. But, yeah, the, that Philly Atlanta game was like. That was. That was a. I mean, I was having a heart attack on that goal line stand. That was a very nerve wracking game. Um, I'm so really surprised. I'm really surprised that game was a lot less competitive considering how the Eagles were a lot more pissed off because no one thought they were going to win that game. But, I mean, at the same time, uh, I mean, part of the reason why they lost, too, is Steve Sarkeesian is a god-awful offensive coordinator. And Matt Ryan didn't have a very good game either. Their defense had a great game. But at the same time, it's like, it's fourth and goal. It's, it's they're on the one, and they run a jet sweep for, like, the third time yeah. on the one that did that season. And it hadn't worked before then. Also, don't forget their play where goal line situation Oh, yeah, you have the, oh, yeah, wide open in front of him for, like, five yards, and he you, waited too long. To no, I'm talking about where you have your fullback lined up wide out on the, on the left side. On the last play on your last offensive play. As the only receiver on the left side, like, anyone's going to bother to Yeah, everyone knows it's going to be a rollout at that point. And, I mean, and the same fact was Tevin Coleman was shredding the Eagles. They just kept running to the outside with him, and he'd get, like, six, seven yards of carry. And they just stopped running with him. And they kept giving the ball to Devonta Freeman, who had ten carries for seven yards. So, Steve Sarkeesian, maybe he's uh, maybe he was a little drunk in the booth again. Kind of forgot what to do. Maybe. Uh, they want to try to get them both involved, and it didn't work. Did not work. Yeah, Nick Foles, that was when Nick Foles, like, I mean, up to that point, I mean, we, I think the last game, the last game we got to talk about was, the last game we got to preview was the Giants game. And we were talking mm-hmm. about how, you know, Nick Foles had played well at the end of that Rams game, so there should be reasonable hope that he, with enough time with the offense, he'll play better. And so he that's, did have a very good game exactly, against the Giants. But that's exactly what I said. They lucked out. Yeah, but you weren't at, you weren't on the show that day. You called in. Yeah, but I talked about Nick Foles. Yeah. I mean, he had a great game against the Giants, but a lot of that was due to, like, they got a lot of good field position. They He didn't really lead a ton of drives down the field and scored touchdowns. And then that Raiders game, which was – that was like one of the worst games I've ever watched. It was just awful. I don't. I guess it's just Nick Foles just can't play in the freezing cold, because he did not play well against that Raiders game, and they lo- Eagles lucked into that win. I mean, that was like a good. Their defense was like that was when like everyone was concerned about the Giants game because it was like, what happened to the Eagles defense? Why are they getting shredded by the Giants? Yeah, let's see if but, it's a, a snowy Minnesota. <laughs> I will. I mean, they're in a dome anyway, so it doesn't matter. Eh. Psychological. Artificial, artificial snow. Artificial snow. Put it in the stadium. Yeah, uh, yeah. That and that Raiders game. Nick Foles was awful that game, and they they still managed to win that game. And in the Cowboys game, he only played like two or three drives, but he looked he looked really bad. And that was when I was starting to get really concerned that we were just going to be actually going to be one and done in the playoffs, and this whole season was going to be for nothing. But but then yeah, he first I mean that first game. half against the Falcons was not very good. He was he's missed a, bu- a bunch of throws that he should have made, and they would have helped the Eagles a ton. But then in the second half, he got more comfortable and he got his swag back. He played a lot better, and that definitely carried into the Vikings game because three with 352 yards in the in the Vikings game. Yeah, three touchdowns and a 78 percent completion rate. Yeah, I mean I don't understand. I was so. I mean, I thought Nick Foles was going to play well. I did not think he was going to play that well. Yeah, and and I mean that bomb to Jeffrey was like, that was I was like I was like uh, it's going to be overthrown, and it was like poof, in the right in the bread basket. I was like, thank God. I, I think after a while in a blowout, the other team just starts to give up, so it makes uh, the other team look. Yeah, a but lot by better. that point, the game was fourteen seven. They still had a chance to come back. Oh yeah, but there's plenty of other deep throws that were just wide open. Yeah. For the Eagles. I mean, that Tory Smith throw was a good throw, though. 
That was a good catch, too. That Torrey Smith touchdown was a good throw. Um, the Alshon Jeffrey, the last, his last touchdown in the game on, like, the goal line, when he put it in, like, only a place Jeffrey could grab it, that was a good throw. I mean, I think there's – if he can carry that over, I think there's a very good shot the Eagles can win the Super Bowl. Um it's just like, are we going to... It's like Nick Foles is like two different people at this point. Are we going to get the Oakland Raiders, Dallas Cowboys, Nick Foles, or the Vikings, Falcons, Giants, Foles? Um, let's see if the defensive coordinator, because I think it'll be more of a... Uh, it'll matter more defensively what each team does yeah. than what each team does offensively, because um, key thing in the Jags, uh, they completely didn't notice when Danny Amendola called himself the secret weapon as he scored well, I don't, I two don't touchdowns. The Jaguars weren't used to getting so many compliments. Yeah, they, they weren't They weren't ready for the Patriots' they were, they ultimate were, they, strategy. I mean, they definitely, that Steelers game, they came in, they were motivated because the Steelers all week off. were just like, well, can't wait, can't wait to play the Patriots next week. That's what happens when you don't call the team yeah. the underdog. I mean, as long as, like, and, and the, I mean, people are still calling the Eagles the underdog. They're still mm. not favored against the Patriots. I mean, the, the national media still is going to pick against most of them. Against yeah. Them. So, I, I mean, the Vegas spread is terrible. Yeah. I, I'm a Patriots fan, and I think it's too high. Yeah. I don't under – I don't – I definitely – I mean, every Patriots Super Bowl has been a close game. So there's no reason the, to the expect The biggest win different. was against the Falcons. Yeah, and that was an overtime touchdown. That's the only reason. Yeah, so there's no reason to expect that it's not going to be a close game because it definitely shouldn't be a blowout. Um, I mean, we'll get more in depth with our with the Super Bowl talk next week because we'll have yeah. a lot more. Probably have a lot more news because they'll be practicing and everything again. A lot more stupid storylines. Yeah, a lot. We'll have a lot, a lot more like stupid headlines to talk about all the stupid storylines. Um, but yeah, so I think we. Uh, so wait. When we were talking about the sixes, we, we kind of talked about January sixes, but we didn't do a recap of what they did up to this point. When, when we left them, were they uh, – They were awful. Yeah, they, they, they were, were really bad. They fell sub-500, right? I think so. Or was that – They were just – I think they were, like, still kind of doing, like, average, but they weren't doing – I think that was, like, kind of after the Lakers game, I want to say, where they just – where they had, like, three possessions to win the game, and they just they just blew it, and they let – Kyle Kuzma or someone hit the game-winning three at the end. No, they let Brandon Ingram hit the game-winning three at the very end. Yeah. And then that was like they kind of were stuck in the slump for a while because then I remember they lost like a bunch of games leading they, up to Christmas. They, they fell pretty far out of playoff contention. Yeah. And then they've been playing a lot better since. Uh, Little B blessed us. Yeah, since Little B blessed uh, us. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. However, it, I I think the uh, it, it fell off. I think the buff uh, doesn't last anymore because we lost to the Grizzlies. Don't. Don't say that. Don't anger the base god. Right. No, he understands. It's not. It's not permanent. Yeah. But yeah. L- l- listen. Just don't make. Don't make him angry. All right. We got a good thing going on here. He gave us a blessing. Maybe we can ask him for another one. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they've been eight and three in January, which is good because it's about identical to how they did last year. It's just a matter of can they carry it over. Yeah. Um. And I mean, they're the eighth seed right now. I mean, the I think East, the, there's a lot of I, fluctuation in the East. Yeah. Um, and then also with the like the East, I feel more than the West. Some teams have played way more games than others. Yeah. So the rankings are really weird because I think the pa- the Pacers have played like eight more games than the Sixers have. That's or, weird. Or something weird like that. Like, I, I feel like the West, every team is a lot closer in games played. Yeah. So that's. Um, That's January Sixers for you. Yeah, they're playing a lot better. Uh, who knows about how much longer JJ Reddick's gonna be out for? Um, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot he got hurt. Yeah, he's still he hasn't been reevaluated yet, but hope, three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks from being three weeks. That, that's what's gonna happen in a couple days. I think he's supposed to be reevaluated. Correct. Yeah, it was only like what, like a hairline fracture, something weird like that. And they said in ten days they'll reevaluate him. So. It'll be three weeks from three weeks, just yeah. like Markel Fultz was three weeks from three weeks. Maybe two. maybe we'll see Fultz soon. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, fake Fultz. Brett fake Brown Fultz. stated that this isn't going to be a redshirt season. However, at, uh, they're kind of running out of time. Yeah, they're running out of games to play. Unless he plays just one game. Yeah, he's just going to play the very last that, day of the that'd season. That'd be pretty funny to watch him just come out for one single game. <sighs> but... uh. 
I mean, his his shot still looks really bad, but at least his three throw is getting better. Does not look. It's not like the weird shoulder remotely pump. what we saw when we watched um, the them play the Grizzlies in preseason when we went to that game. Or, I mean, I don't even think I think he made like two shots the whole game. Yeah, he kept trying to drive it. He didn't take jumpers at all. That was uh, should have been our first warning sign. We, yeah, which was a precursor to his shoulder injury, but we didn't realize at the time. Um, so, like, he's made super improvement. That's why I believe he injured himself playing BMX. While he might have been trying to change his shot, the injury and then him hiding the injury while trying to change his shot, I think, messed him up a lot. The, it's, like, exactly like the Ben Simmons situation where no one knows what's going on. Well, no, Ben Simmons was—he just broke his foot. Well, he broke his foot, basketball. and then it was like, was he actually healthy? Ha- is he healthy? How long is he supposed to be out? All yeah, that good stuff. I, I think they held him out on purpose that way he could be rookie of the year this year. Yeah, exactly. Which he's the front runner for it this year. Could you imagine if he came back last year and we had three potential rookie of the years on our team? Ugh. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that's um, about that's about all we have for today. We 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 we, we weren't as focused this week. Doug uh, Peterson. Coach yeah, of the we year. don't have a we don't have a we had a lot to c- try and catch up on. We're, so. we're knocking the rust off. We're, we're trying to get back used. Uh, yeah, we've been on we've been on bye. Yeah, we we, we we It's like our first quarter coming out of the bye. Yeah, we're, we're we were on uh, the medical staff. They told us to sit out a couple games. Now we're coming back and we and we we're shaking get, the rust out. Getting used to it. So yep. So follow us on Twitter at, at Whole Milk Chat, and also follow. You can listen to this episode again on SoundCloud at SoundCloud.com/slash Whole Milk Chat yep. as well. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, have a good night, everyone, and see you next week, same time, same place, uh, same obscure website. Hey, we might be on the app though. Hey, yeah, we're gonna be on the app soon. <laughs>